Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So I'm here. I finally got this in the mail. So it was 30% off um, about two weeks ago maybe. I do have interest in the Monochromance collection, but my interest always exceeds my wallet. <laughs> this is going to go everywhere and it, depending on my experience with it, I'll do another video where I just do like two more eye looks or something. So I think that's gonna work. So to start off with, I'm going to use my Dominique Cosmetics Primer. I have mentioned multiple times how I'm still looking for something to kind of replace this kind of a thing. Um, yeah, I haven't found anything yet. So far, this still kind of reigns king. Um, it's hydrating and it's also very smoothing is kind of what why I haven't found any other primer that lives quite up to this. And then I'm going to use my under eye primer, which I use in pretty much every video. I've gotten pretty good about remembering to use it. It came out like water. I guess it separated in the tube. Hold on, shake it. I don't shake it very often. I'll just have to remember to shake it. And I put this on my upper eyelids too. I find it really helps make my eye primer and my eyeshadow go on way better. So I just let that go everywhere. It is sunny and it is noon. So I'm gonna also go in with a sunscreen on top. I'm questionable about this. It turns out this is actually kind of her first formula of, well, Pony I don't think is involved with Pony Effect anymore. So at this point, it's just a meme box brand and her name is just kind of on it because it's not changed the name. So it's kind of like a Bobbi Brown situation, if I remember correctly. Um, but she did have a hand in making this back when it first came out. And this is actually the first one. Uh, I looked on the website that I bought this from and there's actually a more recent one with a black tube that basically is kind of like a renewed version of this where it's more hydrating. So I goofed up. <laughs> I shouldn't have gotten this one. The Isn't Tree one was okay. I have currently, that is currently on loan to my sister and if she likes it, I'll let her hold on to it. Um, I have a couple other sunscreens on my list like the Laneige one. There's a serum anti-aging one from Innisfree, which sounds real hydrating. There's a cream from Espoir and then of course there's the other version of this. It's not not hydrating. It's just very, very lightly hydrating. So I don't think it's a bad product. I just think for me, if I would never use this during the winter. I want to have a really kind of clean, perfect looking base, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too full coverage because of the nature of what I'm about to put on. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put on liquid concealer first, and then I'm going to use one of my more matte but light coverage foundations. I'm gonna go in with my Lancome Taint Edel Liquid Concealer. I used to I used this a lot last summer and then I just kind of stopped using it because I just don't use liquid concealer, but I need to remember to use this more. So this is gonna go on as a base layer. It's gonna go all over my skin. This used to be a lot lighter on me. Either I lost my tan, which would be nice, or this got darker, I don't know. So I have, uh, you can probably tell I've got some, I've got some zits. Uh, they're not painful, I don't get painful zits, so I can't complain too much, but I do have troubles. I call them my skin troubles. This is a really nice liquid concealer. It's not a full coverage concealer, not on me anyways, but as like underneath foundation, it looks fine. I'm just using my beauty blender. Now I'm gonna use some setting spray. I'm just really gonna lay around my setting spray, so the Alba, just to make sure I have a nice good base for the foundation to grip to. And I'm gonna go in with the Pat McGrath Labs foundation. I used this back when I was on my antihistamines and it looked terrible. I used it after my antihistamine dose dropped down and it looked a lot better, like it didn't flake up or anything. I just, now that I'm like off my histamines and my, I'm also off my prednisone now, thank goodness. I do wanna really thoroughly make sure that I'm checking that this is not expired. It's not a young foundation. I got it maybe six to seven months after it first came to market, so it's over a year old. There's no spring chicken. I just want to make sure the formula is not changed. The color is not different, so that's a good sign. And this foundation has very, very light coverage, so that's why I put a concealer on underneath, so that way I can have like that perfect model skin that the Pat McGrath foundation gives, but I also want my redness to not be visible. I'm gonna kind of look at my skin up close, make sure that nothing's wrong with it. And it did, um, there are some dry patches on my forehead, um, some dry patches around my nose, but those I think would probably be more from the sunscreen than anything. Other than that, it looks good. Looks good, okay, so this is not expired. This foundation is still good, and the Giorgio Armani foundation that I have is expired. So I'll just have to throw that in the trash, which is a shame. Yeah, my skin, the foundation looks good. I'm gonna use my concealer. It 
So I want to really try and make sure that these under eye bags are not visible. Okay, so that's going to be that on. So again, I'm going to spray my face another time. And then I'm going to kind of just make sure that that dries a little bit because I think I'm starting to run low. So the spritzer is getting a little bit messy. It's a good thing I bought two more backups. Uh, and then I'm going to use powder because I'm going to be using all these powder products on my face. I want to make sure my skin looks more or less perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Nikia Joy Cosmetics setting powder because this will absolutely make my skin look perfect. So I'm just going to use one of my Luxie Pro Tools powder brushes and this is going all over my face. Now this, this powder was meant to be used with a sponge. That's how Nikki always demos it in her um, videos. I will say I have had a great experience using this either way. It doesn't matter how I use it. It always turns out looking really nice. Still do want her pressed one. I um, just haven't been able to get around to it yet, but I do really want her pressed one. I feel like that's gonna be much more up my alley. And as I've mentioned before, this is vanilla scented and it's not not strong. It does fade, but you can absolutely smell it when you're applying it. If you don't like scent, after she made this, she made an unfragranced version. So it's literally the exact same formula, but she took the fragrance out. Uh, if I were to ever run through this whole thing, which I doubt I would because you need so little, but if I were to ever run through this, or if I ever had the spare change to, I would sell this and buy the unfragranced one because I do prefer uh, my makeup to have either slight or no fragrance, but that is an option for you guys. So don't worry if you're sensitive to fragrance, she does have an option for you guys, which is great. So yeah, I powdered everything except for my eyelids. And so now my face is matte, uh, my pores are erased, everything's looking good. Now I have heard that his powders are, you know, very easy to use, very buildable, very blendable. So I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty Primer, which is right here. I'm just gonna use this today because this is a very middle of the road primer. It is not especially tacky and it is not especially mattifying. So generally speaking, I find this to work with just about every single eyeshadow I've tried. Uh, that is non in, that is not like a super pigmented indie brand. It generally works really well. And, um, and Butopsy is very neutral toned, so I don't need to particularly make sure that my eye primer had any color or canceled out anything or neutralized anything because I'm working with pretty basic colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my eyebrows and I'm just going to use my Urban Decay Brow Blade, this product here. And I did kind of trim and shorten and also pluck the end of this eyebrow. I think that should help me with making my eyebrows look a little more even. Okay, so yeah, I was able to keep my eyebrows much thinner. The right one is a little bit thick. I went a little bit out of control, but that's okay. That is what brushes are for. So now I'm just gonna put the little hair-like strokes in. There is some kind of construction or renovation or truck somewhere far enough down the road that I can't see it, but the low thuds of the engine and the revving and stuff kind of catches. It's probably going to end up being slightly audible on camera as like a very low pulsing bass noise. All right, so my eyebrows are on looking pretty good. I do finally have the got to be hair gel on the way to me. I placed it with a 21 days of beauty order today. I was buying the Cosrx snail essence for my sister. So I threw that in the cart. So when that comes, I'll be very excited to try it but eyebrows are on. So this is what it looks like. So pretty. The gradations are really pretty. I can definitely see how the gradations make it really fun. However, I could also see as not an artist that if you created a look on one side of your face and you cannot get your brushes in the exact same positions, you might kind of have asymmetrical eyeshadow. So I'm going to start off with this shade here and I'm going to go towards this end, which is more red. So this is Love Kills. I'm going to stick to this side. I'm very eager to try this and I'm using a Sonia G Worker 1. I have heard that these are very buildable, very blendable, and that it's best handled with natural hair brushes. So I will be amenable to that. So this is just a very big fat 
but also a flattened brush. So that's one layer. This is definitely very orange red. It's not like red red. So if you guys were looking for a true blood red, your search will continue. This is not that. I used to be so obsessed with finding the perfect blood red eyeshadow. I kind of gave up because I feel like I'm never going to find it. <laughs> and I'm kind of avoiding the very, very bottom of my lash line because I know I'm going to be putting down darker shadow there. So I don't need all these layers. But as you can see, it layers up really nicely. It does feel pretty firmly pressed in the pan. I'm not getting much powder kick up at all. I am not sticking my fingers into these pans. Sorry, not sorry. I really don't like putting my fingers into matte shadows if I can help it because I feel like my fingers are sweaty. They're covered in cat hair. They're oily. I just don't want to damage or compromise the formula of the eyeshadow pans. So just feels so unhygienic for me to be digging my fingers into anything that's not a shimmer. So I just point blank refuse. Honestly, there are a lot of swatches on the internet of Butopsy at this point. So you are more than welcome to just search Butopsy and find swatches from other people. Like it doesn't look like it's true, true to pan, but it also is here and it's very intense. So I like it so far. So I'm now gonna go into Intrafathom and I'm it kind of goes down into a black. So I'm gonna kind of stick right here in the middle. I don't want it black, but I do want it to be somewhat dark. And this is gonna get pressed against my lash line. And we're gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of begin the smokiness using this shade. My only criticism of this Sonia G brush is that it is so big, it's almost too big for me. So I'm gonna change brushes. I'm gonna take this IT Cosmetics brush. It's synthetic, but it is much smaller, so that I'll be able to put it where I want it. And I'll just try my best to work with this. Um, even though IT Brushes is synthetic, I've mentioned before I do really like their brushes, so I think this should still work. Honestly, if Butopsy only worked with natural haired brushes, I would be loath to recommend it anyways because natural brushes are expensive, so. And then I'm gonna take a Sonia G Mini Booster. This is from the Sky Set, and I'm gonna go into the love side of Love Kills now so that I can start blending these two together. And this is a very tiny dome brush. I really like her Sky Set more than her um, base set. It's the blue handle one because it's small eye friendly. They do blend together very seamlessly. I do really like that. I feel like I kind of want to take it higher. I don't know yet. Yeah, I'm going to take it up a little bit higher because I really want it to be smoky. As you can see though, they blend into each other very easily. I don't feel like I'm struggling. And I really like how the end is much softer. So now I'm just going to take the excess product and put that on the lower lash line. And so that kind of is forming the look. And now I'm going to take another small packing brush and I'm going to go into love the kills side. And I do want to make sure I can really get this red up to where I want it to be. I feel like it's not fully saturated. Okay, that's much better. So now I'm going to go back into my tiny little brush and I'm going to go into the love side of love kills and I'm just going to go over the edges. I want to make sure the edges are nice and blended. Just like that. So now the edges are blended out and you can see that I made a matte smoky eye with a vertical gradient, which is one of my favorite, which is basically like I feel like the most flattering smoky eye for monolids. So now I'm gonna recreate this on the other eye. I have so far had absolutely no fallout from any of these shades, which is awesome. I definitely really love that because I'm the kind of person who just stubbornly keeps doing their base first because old habits die hard. <laughs> And yeah, you really can just see, even as I just roughly pack it on, these two shadows are already beginning to blend into each other. Makes my life so easy. And this brown here absolutely does build up nice and deeply. It just, it, it does take layering. I am layering. I'm taking my time with this. Uh, if you want intense, saturated buildup, this is not like a fast palette, but I don't feel like I am ever losing control over these pigments. I feel like I am able to remain in control of my application and nothing is going too crazy too quickly. I always have like some skipping with my eye wrinkles. That's just normal. I'll blend that out later. And then my left eye is smaller and kind of, it's not the same shape as my right eye by any means. And it's also smaller and the lid droops more. 
So to even it out, I'm going to make sure that I blend this brown up higher because if I keep them at the same level, my eyes look really different. So I do kind of have to purposefully make my eyes uneven. So I'm just gonna go in with the brown on my first brush that I used, which is this worker one. I'm gonna push the brown up even higher than on my right eye. And I do this on purpose because my eyes are so uneven. And so you can see I brought the brown up a little bit higher, but either way, the blend looks amazing. <laughs> so I have no complaints. So uh, again, I'm taking residual product on this brush. I'm not dipping back in for the lower lash line. And I always like my outer corner of my lower lash line to be a little bit deeper just so that my eyes look longer. And now I'm going to amp up the red like I did on the other side. So right where these two colors meet, I'm gonna make sure that I get that red up to the opacity I want. And then I do think it would be nice to kind of just take what's left and just kind of use that to buff out the brown. Just kind of have some color unity here. It, it does mean I'm kind of pulling my lash line out a little further lower than I usually do, but it'll be good. Just kind of like that. So, so the color, you can see the color on my lower lash line. And lastly, I'm gonna go into the love side of Love Kills to touch up the edges. It feels like I could just blend this eyeshadow like all the way out to my like my hair. Yeah, I feel like this was really easy to create. I don't feel like I had any troubles working with these mattes on my eyes like at all. It just kind of felt like it all laid on without much fuss. So I definitely really appreciate that. I do kind of wish I'd gotten boy tears because I would have loved to see what happens if I put it on top, but I did not get it. So that's fine. <laughs> uh, we can just admire it. I would still like to put something on top. So I'm going to kind of find like a toppery shape and I'm gonna use that instead. I think what I'm going to do, cause I actually, you guys, I bought from Phytosurgeons thinking I was gonna make a Phytosurgeons video and it's been six months since I made my Phytosurgeons order and I never made my Phytosurgeons video. Talk about a shame. So what better time than now? The best time to plant the tree was a long time ago, but the next best time is now. So I'm going to use the Fractal, it's called Fractal Freesia. It's one of their flash, flash fluoresc fluorescence singles. Um, now Phytosurgeons is an Asian owned brand. They're based in Canada. So the prices on their website are in Canadian dollars. So if you're in the US and you're buying for them, it's really not as expensive as you think it is. So I'm going to use a nice stiff brush because you actually can use your brush or your fingers. And I'm gonna pop this across Across my eyelid and I'll show you guys what this looks like. It is so pretty and I just kind of want this across the middle of my eyelid as a twinkly topper and you can apply it more opaquely obviously but the way I'm using it I'm just tap 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 I'm just tapping it across the middle and do you see the effect that gives my eyelid? It, it, it feels like boy tears. <laughs> it does feel a lot like boy tears, which makes me want boy tears. Um, but yeah, I just finally am getting around to showing something from Phytosurgeons. Like, and I, cause I really, really want more people to buy from them. They deserve it. And their new collection of their more grungy cream shadows is absolutely been on my wish list. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because I was like, I need to buy from them when I know I'll be able to finally film with them like in a timely manner. Otherwise I'm gonna buy from them and it's just gonna sit there on my desk again. So yeah, this is one of their shadows and you can see the way I'm using it. I'm using it as just dust. It's fairy dust on my eyelids. It is a beautiful effect. And now when I put it on my lower lash line, I'm gonna switch to using kind of the pointy end of this brush and I'm gonna really apply it more a thicker layer. It is creamy, but it's not like super, super balmy feeling. Like um, it kind of has that consistency to it. So it's not like too, too, too creamy. So I'm putting it on with more saturation on my lower lash line. Like I'm putting on more and you can really see that becomes more twinkly. And like you guys, these pots are huge. I mean, they could switch to smaller pots and I don't think anyone would complain. And I'm gonna just stop there. So that's what that looks like. It is so pretty. This is a cream shadow. So I am gonna give it a nice good swatch for you guys on the back of my hand so that you guys can see what it looks like. Again, it's a very sheer kind of toppery shade and it's not super, super wet. So I don't feel like it'll dry out too quickly. Um, I kind of wish they came with stoppers, but if they did, I might've thrown mine away cause I'm stupid. <laughs> Here is what it looks like on the back of my hand. It is so pretty. Uh, if you're into glittery highlights, you could use this as a highlighter too. Now, Phytosurgeons does have highlights. They're making, they do make highlights. I don't have, I don't have their highlights because the highlight is kind of advertised as being super like 
dewy emollient glossy and I don't want that on my face but this is what that looks like so I'm gonna put on some lashes because your girl ain't got any lashes okay so I am going to try soft bloom so again these are the 2.0 lashes soft bloom looks a lot wispier and longer than old soft bloom so that's why I really want to try it because I do have soft bloom and I do wear it I still actually have it in here I think pretty sure this is soft bloom I still have it I believe this is it up here. Uh, the new version is not as crisscrossed. It's longer, but wispier. Um, so I don't know if it might be too long for this look, but it's so wispy. I think we have a chance. Okay, these are a little bit long, I think, but that's all right. I'll, I'll see how that holds up while I put on the other eye. I'll see. I might have put them too far out on my other eye. Okay, so I put it on the left eye a little bit differently, and I feel like that worked better. But these are pretty long, so I'm not sure how much of a fan I am of these. I don't think these are the most flattering lashes for my eye shape personally. They are they're pretty long, and yeah, I think these covered up a little bit too much of the eyeshadow for my liking. Okay, so I'm now going to put on some lower lash mascara after all that fuss. Just kind of give them a quick curl I'm going to use the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes Volume Mascara this is the mini, I still have it the length inside is neither here nor there for me but this volume side is very nice it's always such an ordeal <laughs> To get these lower lashes coated without making a mess so i'm now gonna go into blush so i'm going to use the pink blush and i am going to kind of take that in with a little bit of the love side because i want my blush colors to be a little bit i still want them to be somewhat unified at least so i'm gonna go in with the boy side of boy wonder because it's a little bit more coral and that's going to be the starting blush. Um, the only problem with gradations, of course, is if you are putting these shades on your face and you like wanted to, you know, use just one side, but your blush brush is really big, I could definitely see it being a problem where you, you know, pick up more of the color than you intended. So I am personally right now using the Sonia G Cheek Pro. It's pretty small, so I don't have that problem. This goes on the cheeks very beautifully. So this definitely is a face and eye palette for sure. Now my face is pretty matte, so I would expect these to blend pretty easily when your skin is set. Okay, so I have not used these over an unset base or anything like that. So I applied that pretty generously all over and now I'm gonna go into the love side of Love Kills and, oh, I nicked the pan, damn it. <laughs> Um, and I kind of, the way I did it was that I kind of took my brush and I flipped it this way so that it could, you know, stay on the end. And then I just kind of tap it off. And I'm going to tuck this right up under my eye. So I'm just kind of doing a watercolor blush look. This is why I really want monochromance, by the way. <laughs> I would have so much fun with the, with the colors in that palette as blush that I would literally just go crazy. And then I'm just going to kind of take it on the outside of my face a little bit. So you can see I used a little bit of the love side to add that orange back. I'm just going very, very slowly. And then I'm going to go back into the boy side of Boy Wonder. Just make sure everything is blended the way I like it. So you can see it's matte, but it's not taking away from the glow that my skin naturally had from my primers. So you can still kind of see. And also the Pat McGrath foundation because the Pat McGrath foundation is not completely matte. So you can see that it doesn't tamper down any of that glow. Now I have some blushes in my collection where the moment you put it on, it not only puts the pigment down and is matte, but it also mattifies your skin. So primarily Roman Better Than Cheek comes to mind for doing that, which not only does it mattify your skin, but it also blurs your pores. So that's a really cool formula there. This doesn't do that, it is just matte matte but it also doesn't adjust your skin finish so if you got your skin finish just the way you want it and you want to use a pigment for your blush that is not going to add or subtract glow because you work so hard to get the finish you want then these will be right up your alley because it does not alter the finish of your skin at all okay so i'm gonna go in with contour and this this is gray like so i'm gonna go straight down the middle <laughs> 
And I'm just going to use the same brush just because then it'll kind of melt into the blush a little more naturally because it'll there's still residual pigment. And now I'm going to take this on the outer part of my face and I'm just using this to add my bronzer. Slowly wrap that around my face. I definitely want this to be blended out. I put on a little bit too much. A little bit of wet on the wet paint side and I'm just going to use that to <laughs> lighten up my bronzer contour because oh my goodness i put down too much i do really like tan lines and wet paint i pro actually i'm dumb i should have gone in with the tan side of tan lines to contour i'm so stupid let me just salvage this look a little bit <laughs> and now on the other side of my face i'm gonna start with the tan side of tan lines and then i'm gonna go and add a little bit of the middle of feel real just so that it doesn't look completely asymmetrical but um yeah i'm dumb I should have just gone in with the tan side of tan lines. This is great. This is good. This is perfect. See, this is what I this is what I was wanting. And I just totally almost screwed up my face. I, I remembered. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put this on and then I'm gonna add a little bit of depth with Feel Real. So I'm gonna go into Feel Real and I'm gonna tap a lot of it off on the back of my hand. And then I'm just gonna very, very quickly and lightly swipe inwards and then i did really like how the wet side of wet paint kind of neutralized all that warmth i'm gonna use it again i just really like how i can really just mix the colors i'm i'm like i'm mixing and i'm matching and i feel like i'm actually able to really kind of customize the shades that i want i definitely really like that aspect of this palette it does feel really artistic you know for me in particular that's very fun and delightful that is that on the face really really pretty so i'm going to close this up that is a full face of butopsy and from here on out i'm going to just use some other products and we're going to finish up so for highlighter so i i don't know if i like this or not and i'm still trying to decide so i'm still i'm going to use this today i just have hardly felt impressed by it and i'm going to do this this is a very dark highlighter. It's the lightest highlighter in the range. Let me say the name of this highlighter. It is the M Cosmetics Sunscape Highlighter in the shade Clarity, which is the lightest shade they offer, but it feels a little bit too dark for me still. And I don't know, I just, for the price I paid, I just don't get what I expect. Uh, she claims that it's like a skin smoothing highlighter and you could build it up or you could tone it down. It feels really metallic to me. It, see it just feels like I put a metallic eyeshadow on my cheek. Well, it looks alright today, so maybe it could just be that this is meant for more matte bases. Okay, on a matte base, so like what I have today where I powdered everything down, it actually looks really nice, but... I will say if you have a dewier base, it will emphasize texture because all the previous times I've used it, it has emphasized all my texture. And now that I think about it, all those times I was using a dewier foundation like my Estee Lauder one, which I adore, or my Hera Glow Lasting one, which is the other one I adore, and that's when I hated it, was it when it when it was that. But today, I used my Nakia Joy Loose Setting Powder, I used the Pat McGrath foundation, and my skin was very matte. This highlighter is actually really nice. It just feels very metallic. It has a lot of base pigment to it. I think that's the biggest reason that I am so conflicted on it. Yeah, I think now that I've used it again over this base, and I'm thinking back to all the other times I used it, is a highlighter for a very specific finish of skin. And thinking about her lineup, she does have the cushion highlighter, which I would imagine is meant to be used over a dewier base. So I can see her reasoning, and within the context of her line, this is not necessarily a badly designed product. But given the price point of cosmetics. I don't actually think I would ever recommend this highlighter to anyone and I think I just ruined my chances of ever being on M Cosmetics PR list but I gotta be honest with you guys I think this is $34 or $38. That's expensive for a highlighter that only looks good in one situation and it might not even be a situation you ever personally would find yourself in. So if you want a highlighter that is a little bit more multi-purpose than that and if you can find it, I still think Becca made the best highlighters. <laughs> so I was not expecting that Buxom Beyond Beige lip liner to be that concealer lippy. So I'm going to use Nablus Cupid Arrow in number one today. <laughs> This is definitely more my speed of lip liner. It just is technically an eyeshadow. But um, because I use this on my lips, I will never be able to use it on my eyes because I don't want to... I don't want to put my mouth in my eyes, okay? I was hoping that they might go on sale during 21 Days of Beauty, but they didn't. I, I love these. It's just if you guys get these, really don't mix your eye and lip products. Don't put what you put on your lips 
in your waterline, it's really not worth your eyes. You only get one pair of eyes. If you do want to use Cupid's Arrow as a lip liner, just bear in mind it does fix pretty quickly since it's an eye product and once it fixes, it's not going anywhere. So if you make a mistake, you want to make sure you fix it like immediately. <laughs> Don't delay. And my lips have been so dry lately, it's really hard for me to um to use matte lips. Okay, I'm gonna use this shade here. This is from Romand. It's the Milk Tea Velvet Tint Series in 04. This is really honestly the exact same as their Zero Velvet Tint formula. Uh, I don't know why it has like a different line to it. It feels the exact same. And you can see it's like a burnt color. And the reason I like my Korean tints so much is because they're just so easy to blend and blur. So now I'm gonna flip the applicator over, which still has product on it, and I'm just gonna add another layer on the inside of my lips. Just to make sure my lips don't look shortened, I do make sure I go to the outer corners and put a a little bit on there and it just helps my lips look a little bit longer because my lips are not very long and that was in the shade 4 caramel tea i really want this year to be the year i do more makeup looks with wigs it just hasn't happened yet because i'm terrible at it still but maybe i'll get there one day so i zoomed out a little bit and this is what the finished look looks like i hope you guys enjoyed this brief full face demo with butopsy i had a lot of fun working with this palette i found the quality of the mattes to be so easy for me to work with i didn't feel like i had to put really any effort into blending the colors just kind of blended themselves as i applied them uh it is very buildable your the first layers are more sheer so you're gonna want to be patient and kind of just build up those layers using them on my face as you saw i had a great experience even though i accidentally went in with a dark shade you could see how i can really mix and customize the shades in this palette to troubleshoot and correct any errors that i might have made and the result is a really really pretty look so i personally have no regrets buying this the only thing i have to say is that i bought it for 30% off. So I spent about $49 on this. So would I have paid $70 for this? And will I pay $70 for Monochromance? As you can see, I don't have Monochromance and I didn't get Butopsy until it was on sale. So initially I was going to get Butopsy during one of the Beautylish gift card events. So that wouldn't have been as much of a discount because it's a gift card event. I would have had to pay full price for it and then I can use the gift card to get something else. So it was in the cards eventually, but I think the fact that I waited for a discount should kind of tell you guys how I feel about the price of Hindash's products. I probably am going to wait for Monochromance to go on sale before I think about buying that i'm probably going, going to do that so i had so much fun i'm in love with butopsy but i am not in love with the price i didn't pay full price for it and i don't know if i would so i don't know if i can recommend to you guys to spend that kind of money because obviously it's not on sale anymore i do try my best to make my recommendations things that i genuinely wouldn't feel bad if one of my viewers went out and spent the money like i wouldn't actually feel bad if you did that so i always feel very reserved about recommending anything that's high-end or luxury because i don't i would hate for one of you guys to be convinced to go out and buy something and then be really really disappointed because then you wasted your money and it was because i misled you guys so um yeah <laughs> So that's why I'm always like super reticent about saying go buy this now even if I really like it because it's a lot of money and not everybody has that kind of change to just throw around willy-nilly. I mean, I can't get monochromance right now and I'm probably not going to for several months. So it just is what it is. So, uh, and that's why I don't really ever recommend motherships to anybody. If somebody's like, I want a mothership and I need to decide which one to buy, then I'm a little more eager to help you decide, but I'm not going to tell people to go get motherships for the exact same reason that they're really, really expensive. That's that's my ultimate thoughts on Butopsy. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, but it is expensive. So be very mindful of what you're spending your money on and definitely make sure you are okay with spending that kind of money on something before you do. Don't jump to the gun and buy it just because a beauty YouTuber said they liked it. And maybe if you do want it, you know, he'll do he'll do sales again stuff goes on sale so maybe you can just wait until butopsy goes on sale again and then you can get it at a discount and then it'll be more worth it to you so that's kind of my thoughts on that i hope you guys enjoyed this love my look love how this looks i had a lot of fun the lashes were a choice and i could have used a different pair but that's it. I'll be back with more content soon. I am going to do two more looks with this palette to help you guys really decide if you want it or not. I'll use the other colors in here. I'm going to put the black to the test. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye-bye!